Welcome to the International Donors Conference for Ukraine. I would now like to give the floor to the Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki. Thank you very much for all of you who came to Poland, who came to Warsaw, and all of you who uh, also pledged so much for, to support Ukraine. I'm going to per personally thank first Magdalena Andersen, Prime Minister of Sweden, uh, Poland and Sweden, uh, we are always so much close working towards um, Ukraine and uh, Eastern Partnership. And this is also uh, today a very clear sign of uh, cooperation. And thank you, Magdalena, for this. And also, Ursula, thank you for your presence to Warsaw. Uh, President of the European Commission is enormously involved in supporting Ukraine on all uh, different occasions and uh, many different aspects. So uh, really thank you very, very much, Ursula, for all what you are doing. And also uh, I'm going to thank Charles Michel, who is not with us right now, but who was with us uh, at the conference. <clears throat> and thank you, Denis, for coming to this important uh, conference. I also like to take this opportunity to thank all the Polish citizens and everybody who is involved in supporting Ukrainian refugees and who is involved in gathering uh, all the funds to support Ukraine. We have to bear in mind that we are all active and we try to actively and uh, effectively support Ukraine, but they are fighting for all of us. They are fighting for the freedom of Ukraine, but they are fighting for security and peace in Europe. Um, and uh, this connectivity, this link cannot be forgotten. Well, like history teaches us also that for civilians, war almost always means fear and death and hunger. Uh, in Ukraine, we are not dealing with an ordinary war. Uh, it is an assault justified by lies and carried out by criminals for human rights are an ab abstraction and for whom cruelty is a way to win. A cruelty is a way to win for the Russians. This means the indescribable uh, misery of the citizens of uh, invaded country. And we encounter this, we see this every day. We see uh, Ukrainian soldiers in our hospitals. We see Ukrainian refugees. And we see people of Ukraine in Ukraine suffering enormously. So this is why I believe um, that the time for uh, acting Time to act is, is now, and we have to remind ourselves about this every, every day. Photos from today's Ukraine differ from those from World War II only in resolution and color death. Uh, cities under z siege and people starved to death, it seemed like scenes from the 70 years ago, but this is this is today, and we, we see this uh, every day. Uh, unimaginable losses, numbers of hospitals, schools, kindergarten, uh, housing estates. We see this every day, but we cannot get used to this, those pictures. We, we have to be decisive enough and patient enough to support Ukraine in everything what uh, Ukrainian people are doing to defend their, their freedom, their sovereignty, and their territorial integrity. <clears throat> On this conference, we were able to gather more than 6 billion euro, uh, and this money will be, uh, this patch will be distributed, distributed to support Ukraine and all those who support Ukraine, because uh, we know how painfully and how costly it is for the Ukrainian nation. When uh, Russia brings death, the countries of the free world have to bring aid. And, and I think this conference here in Warsaw 
showed enormous uh, amount of solidarity amongst all of us um, to provide uh, hope for Ukraine, to provide future for Ukraine, because we were discussed, discussing not only the here and now kind of hope, but also the future of a sovereign and free Ukraine. Ukraine, which also should be given as quickly as possible a candidate status uh, f uh, for, to the European Union. I know how important this is uh, for Ukrainian people um, uh, to, uh, to maintain their fighting spirit, their morale. It is uh, extremely important. We must act with the perspective of a long-distance uh, runner. Finally, today we are faced with the question of what can we do for Ukrainians to survive? How can we help Ukraine to stand on its own feet? And a special obligation rests with those EU countries that have built energy dependence on Russia for years and sold weapons to it. I won't mention any particular member state. I know that the situation of countries differs from one to another, but uh, the unity is extremely important today. And once more, let me thank the European Commission and Ursula for uh, your involvement to maintain this unity and to make as uh, much of a progress as possible in uh, yet another package of sanctions, because this is what we have to do. We have to decisively reply to all the atrocities of war to contribute to stop this war as quickly as possible. Today, Ukraine is a pillar of our world, and we all owe it a debt of gratitude. We have to start paying it back immediately. We have to be in solidarity because there is no freedom without solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now I would like to give the floor to the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Sweden, Madame Magdalena Andersson. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Matthias, for uh, co-hosting this conference together with uh, Sweden, and also thank you, Dennis and Ursula, for being here with us today. And after um, Russia's unprovoked and unjustified aggression against Ukraine, Europe is no longer the same. The testimonies from Ukraine remind us of the worst moments in European history. And we see cruelties that we hope no one would have to experience again. And at the same time, we see the courage of Ukrainian leaders and their people. Not only are they fighting to protect their own country and their lives, but Ukraine is fighting for the right of free and democratic states to choose their own future. And in that sense, you are fighting for us all. And therefore, we need to support you. We need to support you financially, militarily, uh, with humanitarian aid. And also, we need to continue with the sanctions. And also, I'm very happy for the next sanction pa package. But as always uh, in war, civilian population pay a high price. And this humanitarian situation in Ukraine is acute. And for this reason, we are gathered in Warsaw here today in solidarity with Ukraine and its people. And I'm proud of the initiative that Sweden and Poland have taken together to organize this conference. And we have succeeded in bringing actors together that want to support Ukraine with immediate humanitarian response and reconstruction, both in the long, short and the long term. And the money that we have raised today is desperately needed for men and women, for children and elderly who see their lives, their homes and their families torn apart by Russia's brutal war. And I'm happy to say that we have seemed to far sur uh, surpass our expectations for today's pledging, pledging. So this is a fantastic result of this conference. Uh, we are one of many partners, Sweden, who work hard to further help the people of Ukraine. This conference was important today, but we do need to keep on supporting Ukraine. 
I also want to thank our co-host, uh, Mateusz, and your government for your leadership uh, to support Ukraine. And also thank the Polish people for your extraordinary solidarity with millions of Ukrainians who have fled their homes. And finally, as we meet here in solidarity today, we have to remind ourselves that the reason for the humanitarian situation in Ukraine, it is the Russia's war in Ukraine, their aggression, and mu Russia must end its brutal war against Ukraine. And it does exist an easy solution. Stop the war. Go back home. Today with the conference, we do send a clear message. We continue to stand with Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now I'd like to give the floor to the, Euro to the President of the European Commission, Madame Ursula von der Leyen. Thank you very much. And me too, I want to begin with many thanks to our hosts, Magdalena and Mateusz, for this outstanding pledging event. And it's a wonderful opportunity and pleasure to see you again, Denis Mihal, Prime Minister of Ukraine. Um, thank you very much, all of you, for making this possible. Today, we came together with a very clear purpose, to support the brave people of Ukraine. The Ukrainians who are fighting the aggressor, they stand up for their freedom, and we stand up for them. We are now in the 10th week of Russia's brutal invasion, 10 weeks during which Putin's soldiers committed atrocities that the world cannot and will not forget, and 10 weeks during which the European Union stood firmly with Ukraine. Of course we know <clears throat> that we cannot match the bravery and the sacrifices of the people defending their country. In this fight, Ukrainians pay with their lives every day. But from day one on, the European Union has stood with Ukraine. Indeed, we have together mobilized our economic power against Russia. We introduced five waves of sanctions that already have a devastating impact on Russia's economy. And we proposed yesterday a sixth package of sanctions, including a ban on Russian oil. These sanctions are severely depleting the Russian economy and destroying Putin's war chest. Putin has started this, way, this war and he has to pay for it. On the other hand, we rallied support for our friends in Ukraine. In the last 10 weeks, since the beginning of the invasion, we have mobilized around 4 billion euros from the EU level to support Ukraine, be it macrofinancial assistance or humanitarian aid or budget support. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart all the people, the Europeans who have opened their minds and their hearts and their doors to Ukrainian refugees from day one on. And here especially I want to pay tribute to the Polish people who in an amazing way have done that. It is unbelievable the solidarity, this is solidarity at its best that we experience on a daily basis. We support these efforts with 3.5 billion that we have mobilized, front-loaded for the refugees um, in the European Union. And last month there was a pledging here in Warsaw also with 1.8 billion for refugees within Ukraine that are in need. Now today we add another outstanding chapter. And this is this pledging conference here. Congratulations to the result. This is outstanding. And I really commend you for that. We know that the next step now will have to be relief and reconstruction of Ukraine. I'm looking to you, Denis Schmihal. Relief because we are aware of the fact that the Ukrainian government needs 5 billion euros per month to um, have things moving on, paying salaries, paying pensions, and uh, caring for the basic services. Here, together with our international friends, we're working to support you. But, of course, the big topic is the reconstruction of Ukraine, hundreds of billions of euros. 
And here too, with the lead of Ukraine, we are willing to give the utmost and to work as closely together with you. Our dream is that we start as soon as possible with investment and reform so that this work will pave the way for Ukraine into the European Union. Many thanks. Thank you, Madam President. I would now like to give the floor to the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Denis Shmehal. Dear Mateusz, dear Magdalena, dear Ursula, dear colleagues, friends, partners, first of all, I would like to thank our, uh, to thank our friends from Poland, Sweden, from European Union, from United Nations institutions for organizing today's conference. I want to thank all today's participants who came to support Ukraine. This is gratitude from all the Ukrainian people for your solidarity, for, for the solidarity of United Europe with Ukraine. Since the start of the full-scale war, our state has received more than 12 billion US dollars of support in arms and finances. And we are very grateful for this crucial help. We are currently going through the most difficult stage of our history when the fate of our state is being decided. But we have faith, uh, believe in victory of Ukraine and believe in a bright future. Believe me, Ukraine and Ukrainians see that you also have this faith. We have repeatedly said that Ukraine's victory will not only be on battlefield. Uh, Ukraine's victory will also be when we become a member of European Union, a prosperous and developed country. And again, without your support, this will be difficult to achieve. Today I have informed my colleagues about recovery fund and recovery plan of Ukraine. We have already adopted a number of documents uh, and regulations that determine the basis of the fund's work as well as the vision of our recovery. Uh, as for the fund, Ukraine expects that it will be filled for the five sources aid from partner countries and international financial institutions, contributions from humanitarian organizations, donations from individuals and corporations, uh, and last but not least, confiscated and transferred to Ukraine Russian assets. Work is already underway on all these pillars. I would like to express my gratitude to the IMF for the administrative account as well as to the World Bank for the multi-donor trust fund. They allow us to attract funds from partner countries today. And special thanks to the countries that have already started to make amendments uh, in their own uh, legislation so that Ukraine gets assets to Russia's assets. After all, the aggressor must understand that he will have to pay for its military actions. This is crucially important for all of us and for the future. Today I have also presented our fundraising platform of, for individ, individuals and corporations U24 Gov UA. This platform allows you to choose one of three areas of assistance use a convenient payment, met payment method and has a very high level of transparency, weekly updates of reports and the use of fund and audit by Deloitte. That is why I can, that is why I call on everyone to join us in recovery of our country. As for the recovery plan, it will have two dim dimensions. The first is regional dimension, when countries, cities and corporations take the lead in recovery one of Ukrainian regions, communities or cities. The second dimension is parametric. This is when National Council of Recovery created, the, by, created by the President of Ukraine uh, develops the parameters of transformation in each sphere and then together with international partners implements this transformation according to the regional principle. The goal is not just to rebuild what has been destroyed, but to build a green, modern European state. 
We have identified 10 key sectors and formats for future recovery. The key one is membership in the European Union. Also, it is the development of the military-industrial complex, energy independence, deregulation, support for processing, and climate modernization. We are well aware of the complexity of all of these tasks, and we believe that our international friends will help us in this, as they are helping us to defend our and our mutual freedom now. Thank you for this, and thank you again for today's conference, for support of Ukraine. Thank you for unprecedented support of our country to all of you, dear Prime Ministers, dear Madam President, dear colleagues, partners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prime Minister. We are now closing the press conference. Thank you.